this will be the topic for today. Uh, we'll be going all over all these 10 art forms, uh, Pata Chitra, Mughal Miniature Paintings, Kerala Murals, Pad, Madhubani, Kalamkari, Warli, Gon, Kanjur and Mysore Paintings. So moving on. Um, so Pata Chitra. Uh, so Pata Chitra is a really old art form from the uh, from Odisha from the 5th century BCE. So um, in this, uh, it's the detailing is very, uh, so a part of the painting is uh, originated from Odisha, dates back to the 5th century BCE. So this art form um, is characterized by detailing uh, and uh, mythological narratives depicting stories from the Hindu epics such as the Ramayana and Mahabharata. Um, this term, Patachitra, translates to cloth painting and um, reflecting the traditional mediums on, the, on which these art, artworks are created. The uniqueness of Patachitra lies in its craftsmanship and vibrant use of colors. These artists are known as um, Chitkaras, a, a palette of natural dyes um, derived from minerals, vegetables, and other organic sources. Um, the intricate patterns, borders along form are representative of the forms of gods and uh, different scenery pictures. Uh, so we can see here that um, Patitra mainly focuses on depicting gods through their own style, and the style is very. It can be seen as with dots and their their color combinations. So moving on, um, the primary purpose of Patitra paintings have traditionally been religious. These artworks have been used for rituals, serving as visual, visual representations of sacred texts and um, mythological tales. So they are also used to decorate walls of temples and homes, acting as a medium of devotion and storytelling. So if you have been to Odisha, you must have noticed that in Puri Jagannath Temple, you can see a lot of these art forms throughout the temple itself. So about the artisans, um, the lives of Patachitra artisans are deeply connected with their crafts. Many of these artisans come from families that have been practicing that, these art forms for generations together, um, passing down techniques and traditions through the ages. Despite the challenges posed by modernity and declining demand for traditional arts, these artisans remain committed to perceiving their heritage, and they often live in small communities where they continue to teach and uh, teach this ancient art form, ensuring its survival for more generations. Um, and um, these art forms are usually mostly national awardees who have won uh, many awards and they've been recognized by the government itself or received awards from the president's prime ministers. So even though they are this capable, um, they have not been able to continue to live a good sustainable livelihood because um, of the changing um, generation and their mindset. So moving on. Mughal miniature paintings. So these paintings were done basically in the Mughal dynasty during their era. And um, so these paintings um, flourished in the 16th century um, to the 19th century, which is Mughal era in India. So which represents a unique fusion of Persian, Indian and Islamic artistic, artistic, artistic traditions. These ex exquisite artworks um, are characterized by the intricate detail, vibrant colors, and intricate brushwork, and are characterized, uh, and um, they are often depict court scenes, battles, and hunting expeditions, mostly the lives of the Mughal empires. So these paintings originated uh, from the era of um, Mughal emperors, and the, the emperors who increased these were majorly Akbar, Jahangir, and Shah Jahan. These rulers were great appreciators of art and culture. Um, they established a royal ateliers where artists were allowed to sit there, understand the scenario, and uh, draw such paintings to document their history and this, this painting style. Um, this uniqueness of Mughal arts, art lies in their combination of five in detailing and rich color palette, which together create a sense of depth and realism. Um, the use of delicate brushwork, often with brushes made with squirrel hair, and the depiction of intricate details such as the patterns on the clothing, facial expression, and even individual leaves on trees. Um, the primary purpose of Mughal art forms was to um, document and glorify the achievements of daily lives of the Mughal emperors. So these paintings served as historical records, um, illustrating events such as coronations, battles, and uh, royal processions. They also captured emperors' love for nature with detailed depictions uh, of gardens, animals, and birds. So the creation 
pro process of Mughal miniature painting involves several stages. It begins with preparation of paper, or which is called vellum, with um with use of gold and silver um, elements, so which depicts wealth. Um, it, it um, then artists apply natural pigments in layers with fine brushes to achieve the desired depth and detail. Gold and silver leaves are often added to highlight certain elements, giving the painting a luxurious finish. So about the artisans. So these artisans, um, this art form is no longer, no longer very much prominent because it ended when the Mughal Empire ended. So when the artisans were uh, continuing to do this art form, um, they had dedicated royal ateliers, places in the royal kingdom itself, uh, where they were able to draw it and um, present it to the artist. So. Um, these artists were highly skilled and trained from various aspects of the painting by the emperor itself. Um, these emperors also recognize and encourage such work so that they can continue this heritage. Um, despite the decline of the Mughal Empire, the, the legacy of the Mughal miniature painting continues to influence Indian art forms. Many contemporary artists draw inspiration from this rich tradition, incorporating its techniques and aesthetics into their work. Uh, so after this, we'll be going on to Kerala murals. So Kerala murals. Uh, so these uh, Kerala murals are originating from the 8th century, decorate the walls of temples and churches in the southern state of Kerala. These murals are unique for their elaborate depiction of the Hindu gods and goddesses, often narrating stories from the Puranas. These primary, this the primary purpose of these murals um, were religious, serving to educate and inspire devotion among viewers. So Kerala murals were categorized as uh, by their bright colors and uh, intricate designs. The artisan used natural pigments made, made majorly from minerals and plant sources which give murals their distinct and vibrant appearance. The use of red, yellow, green, blue, white and black along with their detailed representation of human figures, animals and mythological scenes. Um, the creation process of Kerala murals involves the technique called fresco, which is also known as water on water. So where natural pigments are applied to wet lime plaster. This method ensures that the colors are absorbed into the plaster and the method ensures that um, the, the artwork is durable and long lasting. The process begins um, with preparing the surface by applying several layers of lime plaster. Once the surface is ready, the artist sketches the design of using charcoal or a similar medium. Natural pigments are then applied using brushes made from local materials such as coconut fibers. And um, then using that, using that, the artist adds fine details and highlights uh, specific elements to bring life into the art form itself to create depth and realism. So this art form is continuously uh, done in the state of Kerala where um, there are trading schools dedicated to these art forms. Many of these artists belong to families with long lineage of mural painters passing down their skills, techniques through generations. Despite the challenges posed by modernity and declining demand for these art forms, um, they still uh, are continued in small communities where they continue to create and teach these art forms. Uh, so Kerala mural artists are, um, are still prevalent in the state and um, they, they undergo rigorous training in their field so that they continue to um, continue to sustain their quality throughout. And um, this deep connection, they have a deep connection with the art form and so that they can connect with their art form and do it to the best of their knowledge. So this connection helps their artworks to get life into it and create a connection and a story towards it. So part paintings. So this this is a this is a very famous artwork um, art form along amongst India itself. So this painting originates from Rajasthan around the tenth century, and um, it's a type of scroll painting. So it it includes vibrant depiction and local deities. Um, the uniqueness of part painting lies in the narrative style with entire uh, stories depicted on a single scroll. The primary purpose of part paintings was to serve as a visual aid for folk singers known as Bopas who narrated these tales during village gatherings and festivals. But paintings are, character are characterized by their bold colors and dynamic compositions. The scrolls, um, often spanning several feet in length, are filled with detailed figures 
um, and, uh, and uh, can create a visually engaging narrative. The use of natural pigments are derived from basically minerals and plants, give the paintings a vibrant, vibrant color and, um, and yeah. Part paintings, uh, so continue moving on. Um, the part paintings were created um, through uh, several steps. The scroll usually is made of cotton or, can or canvas, is, which is treated with a mixture of cow dung and water to prepare the surface. Once the surface is ready, the artist sketches the outline of the story with a fine brush. Natural pigments are then applied in layers to bring the composition into life. Each figure and scene is detailed, ensuring that narrative is clear and engaging. The final step involves adding highlights and intricate patterns to enhance visual appeal of the painting. Artisans who create putt paintings are known as putt painters or joshis. So joshi is the name of the family who still continues to paint these. Um, so these, um, these artists are deeply committed to persevering the tradition of putt painting passing down their skills, knowledge through generations. Despite these challenges posed by modernity, uh, but painters continue to create and innovate, ensuring that this heritage remains relevant and um, appreciated. The lives of part artisans are closely intertwined with their crafts. The Bopas, who narrate the visual and oral traditions, are, are preserved together. The, this close collaboration between artists and storytellers creates a rich and dynamic cultural heritage. So these uh, scrolls usually go up to 15, 20 feet long. And um, as we can see, they are uh, in this picture, in this picture. So they are continuous, they depict a continuous story like the Mahabharata or the Ramayana, where um, the artists and the storytellers work together to create this. Uh, so Madhubani paintings. So Madhubani paintings, also known as Mithila art, originates from the Mithila region of Bihar and Bihar, with roots tracing back to the 7th century BCE. Traditionally, these paintings were created by women on the, on the walls and the floors of their home during weddings, festivals, and other, um, okay, other events. The uniqueness of this Madhubani art lies in its vibrant colors, intricate patterns, um, and double-lined borders with symbolic motives. So, which usually depict the themes of nature, mythology, and Hindu deities. The primary purpose of Madhubani paintings was to depict and celebrate important events and deities, invoking blessings and prosperity. Over time, these paintings have also been used as means of storytelling, preserving folklore and culture, cultural heritage. The themes of depiction include Hindu gods and goddesses, and uh, scenes from nature such as peacocks, fish and um and other other animals and deities itself the process of creating these art forms is strenuous the surface which can be hand which is handmade paper cloth or canvas is first coated with a mixture of cow dung and mud to provide a base the artist then sketches the design using fine bamboo stick or a pen nib natural dyes and pigments are made from plants minerals and other organic sources which are used to fill in the design. Colors are applied in flat, bright patches, and outlines are emphasized with bold lines, fine details, and intricate patterns. So they are added to complete the composition and create a striking artwork. Uh, artisans who create Madhubani paintings are traditionally women and from the Mithila region who have passed on their skills and techniques through generations. These are, uh, artists are known as Madhubani painters and um, they often work with their communities preserving cultural and artistic heritage of their ancestors. Um, the lives of Madhubani artists are closely connected with their art. Many of these women struggle to manage their artistic work with their household responsibilities, finding time to create a beautiful painting during their daily routines. The rise in global recognition and appreciation of Madhubani paintings uh, have provided these artisans with a new opportunity for economic and social recognitions, allowing them to continue perceiving their cultural heritage while improving their life, uh, their life, life goods. So Kalamkari paintings. So Kalamkari paintings uh, date back to around 3,000, they're about 5,000 years old. So they date back to the 3,000 century BCE. It's a traditional art form from Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. The term Kalamkari comes from the Persian words Kalam meaning pen and Kari meaning craftsmanship, reflecting the use of a pen-like tool to create intricate designs. 
Kalamkari art is known for its detailed and elaborate depiction of um, mythological themes, floral patterns, and narratives from the Hindu mythology, such as the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. So, um, the uniqueness of Kalamkari lies in its complex and labor-intensive process, which involves multiple stages uh, of hand painting and dyeing. The primary purpose of Kalamkari painting was to decorate temple walls and chariots, as well as to create textile for rigorous um, ceremonial use. Over time, these paintings have also been used for storytelling and the medium of artistic expression. Um, the process of creating a Kalamkari painting uh, begins with preparing the cloth, usually cotton or silk, by treating it with a mixture of cow dung and bleach to remove impurities. The, the artist um, the artist in sketches the design using a bamboo or a date palm stick dipped in natural dyes. The outline is typically drawn from black or red, um, black or red, with uh, with the details filled in natural natural colors made from various plants, roots, and minerals. The cloth is repeatedly washed and boiled to fix the colors in a vibrant and durable artwork. So about the artisans, these artisans who create Kalamkari paintings are known as Chitkaras, Chitrakaras, often work with their families, passing down their skills and techniques through generations. These artists are dedicated to preserving the traditional methods of Kalamkari painting, ensuring that each piece is created with the same care and attention to detail as their ancestors. Despite the challenges posed by industrialization and decline of in demand for the traditional textiles, Kalamkari artists remain committed to their craft and continue to create and innovate uh, while maintaining the cultural essence of their work. The lives of Kalamkari artists are closely connected with their, to their art. Many of these artisans balance their artistic endeavors with other responsibilities. Finding time to create a beautiful paintings amidst their daily routines. Um, the growing recognition and appreciation of Kalamkari art have provided these artists with new opportunities for economic empowerment and cultural preservations, allowing them to share their unique artworks with the world. So Warley, Warley. So Warley is also another very famous artwork which can be seen for uh, decorations all over India. So this um, painting has originated from the Warley tribe in Maharashtra and dates back to the 2500 BCE. The tribal art form is characterized by its simple but yet um, expressive use of geometric shapes to depict scenes from daily life, nature, and tribal folklore. The uniqueness of Warley art lies in its minimalistic approach, using basic shapes such as circles, triangles, and, um, and other elements to create intricate and meaningful compositions. The primary purpose of Warley was to celebrate and document tribal lives their rituals their and their customs. These paintings are traditionally created on the walls of huts, as you can see there, and um, during festivals, weddings, and harvests, as serving as visual narratives for the tribe's experiences and beliefs. Common themes of Wali include farming activities, hunting scenes, dances, celebrations, often uh, featuring a central motif known as the tree of life. So, um, this process, the process of Warley painting involves a mixture of rice paste and water to draw on the background of cow dung treated mud walls. The artists known as Warley painters use a bamboo stick to create a brush, which allows for precise and detailed designs. The simplicity of the materials in the monochromatic palette of white on a dark background gives Warley painting their distinctive looks. The artists who create Warley, Warley paintings are members of the Warley tribe who have passed on this artistic tra uh, um, traditions through generations. These artists often work, often uh, working within their communities, draw inspiration from their surroundings and daily life. Despite the challenges posed by um, the erosion of traditional lifestyles, Warley painters still dedicate their lives to preserving heritage and continuing this tradition. So, um, Yes, this is a these are Wally painting, and you can see the artists are painting. Um, they're the art forms on the walls, which is very famous. And uh, this, the second art form over here, is called the Tree of Life. So moving on to Gond. So Gond um is 
an art form originating from Madhya Pradesh and was very prominent in the 13th century. They, they, they are unique due to their intricate patterns and vibrant use of color. These artworks are often inspired from, by nature, showing flora, fauna, and elements of daily life in a stylized manner. Um, this the distinguishing feature of Gond art is the use of meticulously drawn lines to create a sense of movement. Um, additionally, dots and dashes are employed to enhance the detailing, making the paint more visually striking and rich in texture. Each piece tells a story, often drawing, uh, often um, drawing inspiration from the folklore and mythology, blending uh, imagination with reality. Originally, Gon paintings were both served as um, an aesthetic and ritualistic purposes. They were traditionally created on walls and floors of houses to celebrate festivals, mark auspicious occasions, and invoke divine um, protection. These paintings were believed to bring good luck and war of evil spirits. Over time, the, this art um, form transitioned into paper and canvas, um, gaining wider recognition and appreciation over time yet still preserving its cultural and spiritual significance. So the process of creating these art forms uh, is both intricate and creative. The artists begin with the base layer on which the main outlines of the subjects are drawn. The outline is filled with detailed patterns, mainly using lines and dots and, and some geometric shapes. Natural, carives, uh, natural colors are derived from sources such as soil, charcoal, leaves, and flowers were traditionally used. Although modern gold artists um, choose to use um, incorporate synthetic colors to enhance vibrancy. The entire process requires patience and precision as each line and dot contributes to the overall harmony of the artwork. Um, the artisans behind gold paintings are known as Pradhans and have traditionally led humble lives deeply connected to their communities and natural surroundings. Historically, they were not just painters, but also storytellers and musicians. Their art reflects rich cultural heritage and deep spiritual beliefs. In recent years, with the increasing popularity of Gond art, many artisans have gained recognition and opportunity to showcase their work globally. However, they still face challenges as market competition, such as the cheaper varieties of these artworks and the fake ones are sold, and um, they don't get sufficient recognition compared to the other ones. Moving on to Tanjur painting. So um, Tanjur art, also known as Tanjavur painting, originated from the town of Tanjavur in Tamil Nadu. During the reign of the Chola dynasty in the 16th century, this art form evolved under the uh, rulers, under the Maratha rulers, Nayakas of Tanjavur, and later on the British colonial rulers, who admired um, its intricacy, beauty, and elegance. This uniqueness of Tanjur painting lies in its rich and vivid colors, a compact composition, surface richness, and sheen. The use of gold foil is a distinctive feature, giving these paintings a three-dimensional effect. These paintings typically depict Hindu gods, goddesses, and uh, saints, and they are characterized by their rounded and divine-looking faces and larger-than-life forms. Um, Tanjur paintings were traditionally created for use in temples, palaces, and homes, serving as a mean of worship and devotion. They were often commissioned by wealthy, um, wealthy buyers and, and, and used in ritual contexts, um, reflecting the spiritual and religious ethos of the time. Creation of Tanjur painting involves a huge process and a time-consuming one. It starts with a base made of cloth pasted on wood, wooden or, carved, or canvas board. A mixture of chalk, powder, of chalk powder and binding medium is applied to create an even surface. The artist then sketches the outline of the image, which is followed by detailed and vibrant color work. The most distinctive step is the application of the gold foil over selected areas to highlight the paintings, giving it a characteristic shine. Finally, the painting is also um, enhanced with the use of precious gems and others, other metals such as silver and, other, and more gold to increase and um, and create a sense of luxury in the picture. So artisans dedicated to Tanjur painting come from generations of traditional artists who have preserved and passed on from this artwork. Despite the high skill and time required, the modern day Tanjur painters often struggle with the economic realities of maintaining their crafts. Many artists work from small home studios and rely on commission based art, commission from their art collectors and tourists. The um, 
these artworks have provided uh, some reliefs for for their sustaining their for them sustaining their livelihoods but then their heritage continues to be a challenge so mysore paintings so mysore paintings are very similar to tanjore paintings but they have a small difference where they use a more dull down and more pastel colors so mysore paintings is a traditional art form which emerged under the mysore reign of karnataka um this art form gained importance in the 17th century under the odaya dynasty and it, and it is closely related to the vijayanagara school of painting um and the specialty of mysore paintings lies in their elegance subtlety and muted colors unlike um the more vibrant tanjore paintings mysore paintings are known for their sophisticated use of soft and pastel shades to intricate detail um they often uh, feature dedicated lines and the use of gold leaves for embellishment creating a sense of depth and richness mysore paintings were primarily used for religious purposes adorning temples uh, royal courts and homes they depict hindu deities mythological scenes and portraits of royalty these paintings were not just decoratives but also served as visual narratives of um, religious texts and legends um so creating a mysore painting involves several stages the base is prepared with thin cloth pasted onto a wooden or canvas board coated with a paste made of zinc oxide and gum after the surface dries the artist sketches the image natural pigments mixed with water and a binding agent um which are used to fill the colors gold leaf is applied to highlight certain areas depicting jewelry or divine elements the final step involves intricate detailing using fine brushes which brings the painting to life with its delicate and precise lines the artists of mysore paintings often come from families with long lineage in this craft however um like many traditional art forms they face challenges in sustaining their livelihoods due to the decline in demand and competition for their modern art these artists typically work from their home from or small studios and their income is largely dependent on commissions and are not reliable efforts by cultural institutions and the government to revive and promote these art forms have provided some support but the artisans lives still um are difficult and are tied to the market demand thank you very much and um i want to i also want to share um one of my artworks uh, the book the book that i've published to brooklyn so um i just want to share that so that book is basically it consists of um 13 different art forms focused on depicting peacocks so that the readers can very clearly identify the differences and the similarities between the art forms from similar regions and different regions um so uh so that book is currently archived in the new york library and uh, yeah here it so um this is the book which is the digital copy so i named this book mayura because it depicts only peacocks um in the indian style so in various indian art forms so mayura is a sans sanskrit word for peacock so um this is the index where i have depicted all the th 13 art forms along with um the de the descriptions for each of them so starting off on the right side you have the madhubani art form the peacock form where you can see all the outlines consists of double lines and they have enlarged features such as the head and the eyes so this art form is very prominent and very vibrant also so then on the left is kalamkari so kalamkari also uses as i said dull down colors and um since it uses more of watercolor techniques um the colors aren't vibrant enough but then they can create detailed and more depth in depth patterns and uh, miniature paintings also known as mukal miniature paintings so these paintings are usually extremely small in size also so they have extreme detail to them and it's very intricate and moving on so this is one of the art forms which i have been discussed so sohra cover so this is also this is a very native art form to um jharkhand where um it's very old and it is it's very it's not very practiced practiced in the current era but um it it focuses on creating um um uh, fauna and flora and fauna focuses on create and on depicting lifestyle of the uh, the sohrai tribe 
so tanjore painting um i've tried to uh, replicate the golden part and as you can see it has a, it has the vibrant colors and the pop and the enlarged face enlarged features along with the borders so gone painting so gone painting as you can see con contains lines and um con fully lines and dots so that can create more depth into it and patachitra uh, it, it it is it is basically a type of folk art. So it is just their style of, of of choosing what to replicate and what to depict in the art forms. So Kerala murals. So Kerala murals have intricate and complete flat colors throughout them. So you can see here on the left side. And uh, Manjusha painting. This is one more I haven't discussed today. So this painting is also not, con not very popular right now. And it's not practiced continuously. And it's on the verge of extension. So I wanted to give it some focus in this book. It, this is it. It's it's also a sort of miniature painting, but then it uses more of flat shades and not that much designs and details throughout the borders. Uh, so, so here um on the left side you can just see different borders and different patterns of India itself of Indian traditional artworks and their borders. Then. Moving on, there's bill painting, which I haven't discussed today. So this artwork, um, again, this is very similar to the Goan painting I've discussed today, but it mainly consists of just dots. There's there are no other lines and other geometry figures. This is also on the verge of extension. Um, then this is Pichwa painting. So this 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 type of painting you can find it in Iskon temples where they depict their art forms. This is more of a modern way. This is not very old. So this is from Rajasthan and um. This they they kind of depict a very lively and very um engaging form of the um element itself. So this is mostly the pictures of Lord Krishna and his allied elements such as the peacocks and yeah. Then this is part part painting. This is just a portion of the scroll, so which depicts how it is made. So there is two peacocks which I want to depict there, and Warley. So Warley, as you can see, it's detailed um paintings along with the white along with white pen and the brown surface behind so with the the darker shade behind highlights and brings in front uh, the detailing in the front so this this is a description i had given and um yeah that's it about me thank you very much i'm open to any questions if it's said Uh, yeah, that's a uh, very nice session, uh, Shasta. You know, for me, I personally like this session. A lot of mm -hmm. new things and uh, the artwork is very good. I can even see someone is posting in the chat box also. So, yeah. So, now the floor is open to uh, queries. If you have any query, you can uh, you know, post in the chat box. Shasta, I can, uh, uh, no, you can check the chat box, the people posting it out. Uh, in this. Yes. So each state in India itself, um, they have their own style and they have their own culture. So along with it, so see, they have their own customs, to be honest. So it's more of like a religion for each community itself. So they have their own, um, they have their styles of doing things. And um, for example, like, Right now, we document everything online, right? So in the olden times, they didn't have these um methods. Even they didn't have a book. They didn't have notes, notepads to write down stuff. So they, they use this as, um they use these art forms to depict their lifestyle and so that their heritage and their lifestyles can be continued and shared to the future. So um it helps the artisans to, um it helps the people of the tribe and of the community to remember who they were and to connect with their ancestors and their lifestyle. So Patachitra painting, so I see a question about, you were talking about Patachitra and can you tell us more about um, what type of stories are shown in the paintings? So Patachitra, uh, in Patachitra doesn't really depict stories. They depict um, pictures of deities and um, it's used for religious purposes. So Patachitra mainly consists of um, pictures of deities done in the Odisha style, which includes bright colors and uh, detailed patterning. Um, yeah, so that's the thing.
they mostly talk about partitri they, they mostly depict um the livelihood of the odisha or livelihood of odisha and the and how their flora and fauna continue to live that one okay for example uh, let me share my screen So if we can see in these Parachitra works, it's majorly narratives and sto and um, narratives about uh, the gods. And for example, in this black and white one, it's a narrative of the Dasa Dasavatara and the stories behind it. Um, and um, you can see the different ones. This is the, this is Krishna and his stories. Um, this is the Puri Jagannatha, which is one of these um, Parachitra paintings are displayed in Puri Jagannatha Temple itself. So you can see this is these are the pictures of Puri Jagannath Temple depicted in form of uh, Parasitra. And so Parasitra is used as a tool to preserve their heritage, preserve whatever is there for the artisan. So this it captures the reality of, of everything. So you can see them work over here. Yeah. So um, I saw one more question of why I just chose peacocks. So peacocks are um, so peacocks are a very important symbol for the Indian culture in every in every art form. And um, I found that peacocks were available in all the different art forms and um, were depicted by the traditional artisans who have been training for years together. So it helped me to uh, interpret their styles and understand the intricacies in each of the art forms and uniqueness also. So for example. The difference between Tanjore and Mysore paintings may not be visible at the first at the first uh, sight, but then when you dig in deeper, when you understand it, you can see the difference between the gradients and the use of colors patterns. So I chose peacock specifically just so that um, I can make justice to each of the art forms and this and um, and depict it and recreate it just as it is done by the artisans itself. So young generations, right? So the problem, um, th this, so this, so the problem with the Indian young generation is that they are not exposed to the existence of these art forms. Even um, see, for example, my parents and um, the previous generation, they at least know about a few art forms. Say, for example, Kalamkari, because it's it has gained popularity over the years. But then our generation, they have completely the 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 existence of these art forms have completely almost um. The understanding is almost disappeared among the young generations. So, um, to motivate young generations, that's why that's the main aim of conducting these workshops. And uh, to exactly motivate the young generations, I've posted blogs so which they can understand it, use it through, you understand the importance of the of their culture and of the Indian culture through through art forms. And um, so know how important it is, just as important as the history books. Um. So which art is simple to start as a beginner? So there are different levels for every art form. It depends on which one, um, which art form actually you, you are able to connect with. So uh, so even for example, there are multiple, the each even the difficult art forms have their own simpler versions and and it is all, it is equally captivating. So everything is, if you think it is easy, you can do it. That's the simple um, thing behind all these artworks. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure about any beginner courses, but, um, I did all these artworks learning it by myself itself. So I'm not sure about the beginner courses over here. So um, artworks are prominent in the Indian culture. So um, so mythical creatures. So yeah, in Patachitra, for example, um, 
there is a myth- mythical creature called the navakunjara so which has nine different elements into one artwork so um but those are all specific to each of their cultures um it's majorly just plants and um, animals which are common throughout all the artworks so i worked on peacock so that, that you can create a continuous visible continuous uh, understanding some similarities so to exactly depict the uniqueness of each of the artworks for the same theme and content so um the other for example yeah navakunjara and um in partachit in in um partachitra and um yeah so this is the main thing and it's mostly gods also Oh, the traditional material so um the traditional materials they are actually um i didn't do it with the traditional materials i used paint and other other mediums but then the traditional mediums that they have used are usually sulfur for yellow and uh, charcoal for black so which are which is actually not that safe to work with also but since they have been doing it for ages together they actually have um cracked how to work with those substances so i have tried with the um non with the synthetic dyes and with other mediums only but i have seen the artisans work with their original ones also uh any more queries you can post in the chat box uh before uh, something comes up uh, shasta what motivated you to take up this uh, whole activity so um yeah so about this activity so once uh, when we went on a vacation to odisha uh, we visited a village called ragurajpura so there i noticed that um these artisans who practice patachitra they are um, extremely um so their living conditions are not that great so the ones there was a flood and there was a tornado and all their homes got wiped out and um there are also fake uh, art forms that are um, fake artworks that are just printed and sold as the real ones so which create um lesser and lesser recognition for the real artisans and their works so that this is the main motivation behind uh, behind starting to do this and um this um this initiative um this basically to help um help the people who are not aware of these art forms to be aware of them their creators their artisans and what they undergo to create each of these art forms understand the culture heritage and the work they put in behind it i think something came up in the chat box so yes they could be classified without them say for example madhubani it's characterized by their double lined borders so um so it also depends on the on the culture to culture say for example um the pichua painting which is talking about they focus on all the lively holds live live of this thing and they focus on mainly depicting krishna so um the so you can't ex- so uh so they started saying um so the pichua painting they mainly focus on krishna because they are part of the iskon temple so again depiction is based on culture to culture it can be depicted without the culture without the context of the culture itself but then the originality of the art form is disappears when you don't do that so it is always better to stick with what the what the what the ancestors have done and just continue to do that over and over again any more queries
uh, I'm just quickly, you know, sharing a uh, quick feedback form on the session that would uh, you know, help us to understand how you like the session. So I'm just sharing the link in the chat box. Uh, feel free to share your you know, feedback as part of the session. If there are no queries, we can you know uh, wind up the session. All right. So Shasta, you want to close off with something? Um, yeah, so I definitely encourage you all to share the word about these Indian art forms. And um, I hope you've all learned something new and um, the impact of Indian art forms on this culture itself. So thank you and thank you all of you for attending the session. Um, it's been great for me and I hope it's been great for you also. Thank you very much. Right. So thank you, Shasta. Uh, that was a wonderful session. Hope uh, you and our... Uh, Participants also like the session. I can see a lot of uh, queries as well as saying that it's a good session. So it's it's a nice subject to discuss and important subject as well at this point of time. So thank you once again. Uh, wish you all the best. And uh, thank you, participants. Thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, happy weekend.